step 5, support nodes, optical switching. In this last step, we're going to talk about a single um, support node, and that's the optical switch. Its job is to establish transmission paths that route photons between different physical locations. For example, here we've got a very simple, the most simple switch, in fact. It's got one input port and one output port, and it's got a control. And this control either uh, determines whether the photon passes through or it gets blocked by the switch. This is known as an on-off switch. A slightly more complicated switch would be one by two, where we have a single input port and two output ports. Here, the control controls whether the input port is connected to output port number one or output port number two. And we can keep increasing the complexity of this switch by going to two by two, where we have two input ports and two output ports. This time the control um, is responsible in determining whether our photons just go straight through without swapping places or if they cross. We can uh, keep increasing the complexity and reach the full n by n crossbar switch. This is where we have n input ports, n output ports, and a control that determines how are each uh, individual input ports connected to which individual output ports. Let's think about some important characteristics of optical switches. Number one is the size. This is the number of input ports and the number of output ports. What's very important is whether the switch is blocking or non-blocking. An optical switch is non-blocking when it can handle all possible input and output combinations. The switching time is very important. This is how long does it take to reconfigure the switch. Faster switching times can improve the performance of our network. Number four is propagation delay time. This is simply the time it takes for the photons to cross the switch. Very important characteristic is the insertion loss. We're talking about coupling individual photons traveling inside a fiber into this optical switch. So at the interface, there is some probability that we're going to lose some photons. This is quantified by the insertion loss. Number six is crosstalk. This characterizes the leakage uh, to undesired transmission paths. So for example, if we set our switch, our two by two switch, to carry our input ports, connect them straight to the output ports without crossing, but there's some finite probability that a photon traveling in one of the input ports will jump across to the other output port. Seven is the physical dimension. Depending on the implementation of the optical switch, these can be quite bulky things, or they can be very small and fit on a chip. Let's look at some of the uh, implementations. The first one is optomechanical implementation. And this relies on microelectromechanical systems, or MEMS. And this technique involves some physical objects that are movable. For example, mirrors, prisms, even optical fibers attached to a rotating disk. Because we are moving physical objects, the switching times tend to be very, very uh, long. But on the other hand, crosstalk uh, is quite low. An example would be the following n by n crossbar switch that is using pop-up mirrors. Here, we are placing a mirror at each intersection of an output line with an, uh, uh, with an input line. And based on the configuration, one of the mirrors just pops up and makes sure that the uh, beam is deflected to the desired output. Another implementation is what's known as electro-optic implementation. And this uses integrated photonic waveguides. Here, the control is in the form of an applied electric field, which has the ability to alter the refractive index of a waveguide. Disadvantages uh, of this implementation are twofold. They're quite lossy when coupled to single mode fibers. And also there's quite a high chance of crosstalk, especially when compared to mechanical implementations. For example, here we've got our wafer with waveguides etched into it. And over here, represented by these two gray blocks, this is our control. This is where we apply the electric field to change the refractive index of the waveguide. 
and depending on the state of the control, our uh, photons will simply go through from the input to the output over there, or they have a chance to cross and exit from the other output. A more complicated 4x4 switch can be implemented using few of the 2x2 switches. In here, in order to have a non-blocking 4x4 switch, we are using six 2x2 switches represented by these uh, interferometers over here, A, B, C, D, E, and F. And depending on the configuration of the controls at each of these uh, junctions, we can obtain the desired output, uh, output configuration. This uh, concludes our final step on optical switches, as well as lesson six on um, types of network nodes.